Get ready to dive into a world where empires stand on the brink of war and terrible monsters tear at the fragile borderlands of men. The Adventurer Conqueror King System Imperial Imprint, or as we like to call it, Axe 2, is now live on Kickstarter. Axe 2 is the new edition of the acclaimed best-selling fantasy role-playing game. You'll find everything you need to enjoy epic fantasy campaigns with a sweeping scope. Whether you want to crawl through dungeons, experiment with alchemy, crossbreed monsters, run a merchant emporium, raise an undead legion, or even conquer an empire, Axe 2 supports your playstyle. Axe 2 integrates experience point mechanics, making campaign activities a seamless part of the core gameplay loop. Your character levels up in new and exciting ways each time you play, adding massive replayability to each of your adventures. Axe 2 offers 18 character classes, 378 spells, new combat mechanics, and so much more. Support Axe 2 on Kickstarter today. Okay, here's how Miro works. See, it's amazing. What's everyone doing at David's desk? Ever since marketing started using Miro's collaborative online whiteboard, he thinks all our other teams should sign up. Why? He says Miro's making his meetings disappear. And if every team gets on it, that means even less meetings. They're using Miro for brainstorms, mind maps, customer research. So could we use Miro instead of having another 100 meetings for every round of feedback? Yep. You can comment, react to ideas, even leave a recording on the board. And what about presentations? There are Miro templates for that. How do you know so much about Miro? I've actually been using it all along. I just used a Miro board to plan the best vacation. Okay, I'm on board. See how Miro users save up to 80 hours every year by meeting less and doing more. Get on board at Miro.com with three boards free forever. That's M I R O.com. How powerful is the Cox Network? So powerful that one day, the internet will let your doctor perform miracles from thousands of miles away. Connecting to remote operating room. Giving a whole new meaning to the term house call. Operation complete. The Cox Network. With gig speeds everywhere, it's internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, bringing us closer. In Cox serviceable areas, speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms apply. Other restrictions may apply. Noctprone is a clean, chaotic, and deep podcast for D&D nerds. Find more ways to support our show in the episode description. Last time on Noctprone. There were nine additional graves with the names of all of the other ten current gods. So there's nine graves and ten gods. Your brother might be trying to be the sole god. I, I think that uh, giving Avani an update, at least we haven't died so far. So when we get back to Greyhaven, do you want to go to Avani? A massive hill giant up ahead. And in the hands of this hill giant, a double-bladed alpike has the sign of Lathander on it. As you touch this all pike, you have the ability to absorb the previous owner's memories. Being a phantom rogue and being used to hearing random things from dead people, let the memories flow. Adriel is fighting and losing. No answer comes from Lathander. Whether you're a happening, a giant or somewhere in between, a crow! On the table with your friends, playing dungeons and dragons. A crow! And if life ever knocks you down, your dice will surely turn around. A crow! Well, that's it's time to quest. Let's put your characters to the my name is Cade, and I'm the host and dungeon master of this Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition adventure, and I'm joined here by the players to my left. Alec playing Zach. Mason playing Grom. Marissa playing Athemia. And Brooklyn playing Celine. We're going to join the party as you guys are getting to the train platform for the train between Brigaroon City and Greyhaven. You see the ticket station that you guys scanned your forever passes to last is sitting to the south of where you are. Oddly enough, the train station platform is relatively empty. Great. Well, I'm going to just say that Zag doesn't notice and he's going to walk up to scan his pass. We are looking for passage to Greyhaven. When is the next train due? Oh, man. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. The, the train workers heard about the union that was formed down the Underdark with the mine workers, and, well, they went on strike as well until they get better pay. So there's no train today. Oh, Ephemia. What? Last time we dealt with union workers, you paid them, right? 
Why don't you just give the train workers some, some money? Maybe they'll take us. No, I can't pay off our problems. Man, you would think a princess came for money. <laughs> okay, why don't you make it happen? Where are the train workers at? I mean, I assume that they'd be home, but I don't know. There's a lot of them, and it takes a lot to make a train run. I'm going to look up from admiring my new lathander themed weapon. Is there any other quick way to get to the city? I mean, I thought that the rune rail system was the only way, but is there something else maybe we're missing? I mean, how is everybody else traveling right now? Roll me a luck check. Zag's going to hand on the shoulder and cast guidance. 18. You feel this pressure change in the air, and as you look up, Flying from above, Selene, you see a familiar symbol. The sun symbol of Lathander is emblazoned on a gigantic metallic beast hovering above. A massive ship in the shape of a bird swoops in for a landing. Heat emanates from this bird-like creature, its platinum feathers seemingly blazing with a strange and wondrous light. As you look over the aircraft, you hear the creak and clang of these complex internal mechanisms and its beak opens. A stairway descends with one final (laughs) From this platinum bird, two crew members emerge, shouting at one another at who gets to drive next. Celine, you see your two brothers, Ruben and Max Lidigate. I didn't know they were brothers. (laughs) Max gets Ruben in a headlock and starts giving him a noogie and is saying, no, no, I'm going to drive. No, you don't get to drive. I'm going to drive. I'm going to run up to them excitedly. Celine! They both say in unison as they see you and stop their wrestling. See, I told you we'd be able to find her. We didn't need directions. We saw you on the TV. You did? You've been the looking for The Wheel of Umber. It was the first time that we watched that channel, but oh man. We were so excited to see you on there. You could see that they're so excited to be talking to you that they're butting into each other's sentences. That's so fun. I. She was super helpful. Uh, yeah, I'm sure yeah. you watched. Well, I got a lot of screen time. We watched the first five <laughs> minutes before before we were busy with other things. But you seemed like you helped. We watched the beginning and the end, and we saw you in the winner's circle. And <laughs> so I assumed that. These must be uh, your hirelings, right? They, oh. they, they uh, helped you with, oh. with, with just like a body count? In, uh, precisely. In, oh. we, uh, ah. we go by the uh, Queen's Guard. Hello. Uh, Royal Guard. What oh, is hello. Yes, uh, let Royal me guard. introduce you. So, Ruben, Max, these are my friends, Zag, Grom, and Ephemia. And uh, yeah, these, these are my brothers. And I can't believe you found me. Side question. Do you, do I know what this bird is? Like, do I... Re- do, do you don't know I, what oh, this okay, bird okay. is. Okay. Roll me a history check. Um, 18. Well, with an 18, you were kind of well-versed in your days as being, like, the town butcher, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this is an Azamar relic. This is something that only the top of the top Azamar are able to have access to. This is Lathander's Finch. It is also referred oh. to as the Azamar's Titan. Okay. And Finch looks up at it and says, Oh my gosh, Celine, that's what I was named after. Oh, I knew these existed. I just, I've never seen one before. No, this is the only one that the Azamar have. This is our Titan. This is Lathander's Titan. It protects our people. So, Max, Ruben, what are you doing here? <laughs> anyway, uh, enough of that, Finch. Stop talking we should get on board uh what <laughs> we, uh, they want us to get on board yeah you guys need a lift uh, we heard that the train station is uh, out of commission that so, would be great we need to be in Greyhaven today yeah, all right very good timing we really are, good timing. we're in a big rush so mm-hmm. actually that'd be great and maybe we can ask questions along the way i'm so glad that we made it on time see i told you ruben ruben if we had asked for directions, we wouldn't have made it here on time. Oh, no, never ask for directions. No, no. Uh, um, Ma- Max. Ruben looks at you, Selene, and is like, Max, um, actually, can you uh, escort these guys on board? Show them, like, the ping pong table. Uh, <laughs> I just, I, I want to have a word alone with Selene for a second. Max looks at the three of you and is like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, hi, I'm Max. Nice to meet you. I'm Celine's youngest brother. I'm also the coolest brother. And Ruben punches him in the arm. And he's like, anyway, anyway, we should get on board. Uh, uh, have you guys ever played, like, ping pong? Oh, oh my gosh, we could play doubles. That'd be sweet. Is, is my dog allowed? 
Oh, of course, yeah. Awesome. Is am I allowed? Yeah. No. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Come on. on. As Zach walks past him, he's gonna punch okay. him on the arm too. Azamar's tradition. I, I guess. Uh, so you guys walk onto the bird. Ruben presses a few buttons. The beat closes for a moment, and he looks at you, Selene, and He says. So, um, I'm not here because of convenient timing. Actually, it was convenient timing that we got here and the train system um, was like on strike or whatever. But uh, the real reason I'm here is Aria is not doing well. What do you mean? I I need more details than that. Just get to the point. Well, you know, uh, Lathander's following has kind of come up into question amongst the ASMR people. It's come to light that with the new placement of one of the gods of the Ten, maybe the gods of the Ten aren't as special as we thought they were. And um, Arya is, well, in the beginning of phases of becoming a fallen Azamar. You know she has just like a little bit of a rebellious streak in her, but like, you know. I know she has a rebellious streak in her. And well, with you gone and mom and dad, gone she has no one to look up to i mean me and me and max we try our best but she's inconsolable half of her body has been overtaken by this fallen azamar look i i've been gone i've been gone for a little while but like you said um she needs that support and i'll be back soon i mean lots of things are going on i don't i don't know I don't even know where to start to, to tell you what's been going on, but I'll be back and, and then I'll help her and everything will be okay. There's a huge role I fulfill, you know, in, with, with Lathander and, and the town and I'll, I'll raise the community back up, but it'll, it'll all be okay. It's Are all right. Are you sure that Lathander's worth it? Worth worshiping, worth following? Because our people haven't been, you should, you should talk to Arya. She knows much more than I do. <laughs> talk to Arya because Arya knows more than I do. Yes, Arya does know more than you do. You've been gone. You didn't help the Azamar community when we needed you. The council died and you left. You don't know what I've been doing here, Ruben. You've been you don't know what I've been helping with. I've been rebuilding our community and you've been out here with your friends on a game show? <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. You don't know what you're talking about. And I know you stole this ship. Don't act like you're so high and mighty. We stole the ship because we needed you to talk some sense into Arya. She and a lot of our other community is in the phase of falling. Okay, well, I'll be there to help, but I have okay, then other go. commitments too. So okay. just take us to Greyhaven and I'll fix everything. Right, like you always do. And he taps the key code into the side of the beak of this bird, opens again, and he storms inside, cross-armed. How powerful is the Cox Network? So powerful that one day, the internet will let your doctor perform miracles from thousands of miles away. Connecting to remote operating room. Giving a whole new meaning to the term house call. Operation complete. The Cox Network. With gig speeds everywhere, it's internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, bringing us closer. In Cox serviceable areas, speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms apply. Other restrictions may apply. Zag, Grom, Ephemia, roll me sleight of hand checks. For ping pong? For ping pong. For ping pong. I'm going to completely fail this on purpose. Um, <laughs> no, no, I was no, just no, about no. To say. Everyone use their inspiration. Yeah. Because <laughs> then we'll definitely fail it. <laughs> yeah. Nine. Grom is trying to play ping pong, but is essentially just hitting it like it's a baseball bat. Okay. And it's just like the ball is just <laughs> flying across the room and bouncing like, like crazy. Zag's, okay. Zag's going to coach him. Slow and steady, but it's soft. <laughs> Soft. I am soft. <laughs> I got plus four, boy. I got a nat one. <laughs> oh, you're so, doing the same. <laughs> yeah, get a, get him out now while you're playing ping pong. <laughs> so you are on Max's team, and even though Grom is like just batting these ping pong balls at you guys for whatever reason, it's neck and neck. Grom, you unintentionally hit the ping pong ball off of the nearby wall and it bounces back onto the table and win this ping pong game for you and Zag. Congratulations! Oh my gosh, that was so fun! 
I think so. You're going to have to teach me how you do that. Do you just swing like really hard? As hard as I can. Yes. Oh my yes. gosh. <laughs> I would rather never play this game again. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. You guys feel the engine start to rumble, and he says, well, we should probably get into the engine room. Yes, once you're driving. No, uh, I'm not driving. Ruben I'll drive. drives. Uh, he, he's the older brother. He should drive. But I, I call shotgun, so, like, step off, okay? All right. Teach me how to drive. Well, I, I never learned, so I can't. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys get up and you walk into the engine room and you see that Ruben is flying the ship. Celine, when you get into the ship's control room, Ruben points you towards Arya's quarters that she's sitting in for this ship. Arya is here on the ship? Mm-hmm. I thought she was definitely back home. Oh, no. Arya is currently isolated in one of these rooms. Ruben says she wouldn't come out, not even to see you. Fix it. And he walks away. Man. Celine, one of the ship doors mechanically slides open as you approach it. Inside, you can see a darkened silhouette of your sister bathed only in darkness and the flickering lights of the ship. The room is uncomfortably silent as you approach. And as the door opens, you can hear Arya's sobs being choked back and her tears being wiped from her eyes. Hey, Arya. It's nice to see you. It's been a couple of weeks. Hey. Hey, Celine. As you look over Arya, Ruben was saying that half of her is overtaken by this fallen Azamar. Cut down the exact middle of Arya. Half of her is darkness, not only in her demeanor, but also her clothing and makeup and skeletal wings. And the other half is light like yourself. So I know it's no secret (laughs) what you're dealing with right now, but um, Ruben caught me up a little bit. No. Yeah. Yeah. Ruben's been trying. Uh, We all been trying, you know. So you don't want this, right? I mean, we, we can fix this. We can take care of it. What do you mean? I don't want this. Well, you know, nobody wants to fall. <laughs> and I mean, you know, mom and dad, can you imagine <laughs> rolling in yeah. their grave right now? <laughs> yeah, mom and dad. Well, I actually found something after you left. I took over your butchering abilities over the sacrificial lambs of the, for the town. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was nervous. I was doing things wrong. I thought maybe my sacrifices weren't working because Lathander wasn't talking to the people. With the council gone, we thought we angered him. I went poking into mom and dad's room to see if if you had left maybe the sacrificial book there for me to kind of uh, figure out what I was doing incorrectly. And I hadn't been in there since uh, they passed, but... It was okay, because uh, but I, f- I did found, find a book, and I, I thought, okay, things are going to get better after this. And I read it, and it was Mom's diary. And I figured, you know, it doesn't hurt. She'll never know. And I read it, and in one of the first excerpts, she copied down a script from some book, some ancient ASMR book, that only her and the council were able to read. The book talked about the days of old where the Azamar people were protecting some group of people against the then mortal Amalek and his tyranny against these people and it described how the Azamar people turned their backs on Grumbopolis and how mom struggled with that and understanding that and then it described how the council hasn't received any legitimate visions from Lathander in a thousand years. That Lathander has forsaken our people and we've been lied to. Lathander hasn't been there for us. And so I started to want, I guess, to fall. Arya, I understand that sometimes things can be shocking and life doesn't seem fair and sometimes that might mean that Lathander doesn't always seem fair but what you're dealing with right now I promise it'll get better this is something to get better from things will be better Celine what if you're wrong you might be wrong what if Lathander doesn't exist he might not you never talked doesn't to- exist yeah what then Celine then what and what if he does? 
What if he does, and you're messing yourself up for the rest of your life? If Lathander existed, why wouldn't he save mom and dad? They were good people, Celine. They did good things for our people. Lathander let our parents and the rest of the council and the Azamar people fall into this turmoil. I'm not the only one who's falling. Our people are falling. People die, Arya. People die. From being slaughtered by some random? Yeah, Lothander doesn't control other people. They do what they will. And you should know. You should know more than anyone. From death comes life. Well, what if I know better than Lothander? What oh, if you know better than Lothander. What Please if Lothander's visions that always warned against the evils of the Church of Amalek were wrong? Because now oh. the prophet oh. of Amalek is on the same level as our god of the ten. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just because a random person was appointed god doesn't make them equal to Lathander. In the eyes of the other people who have fallen, do you know who they worship? Because they don't worship Lathander anymore. They worship the man who is able to shimmy his way into godhood. They worship Thorn. What if they're not wrong? What if Thorn is better? What if we could be like Thorn? What if we could ascend to godhood and all it took was just believing in someone, someone like Amalek? So you want to be a god? So you want to worship Amalek? You want to reject everything you've ever known? You want to leave your family? You want to join this community that doesn't exist for you? Don't talk to me about leaving family. We were lied to, Celine. You were lied to. Whatever god you think you worship was built from the words of a man on the Council of Elders in Ethos Summit. Do you want to follow blindly a god that never existed? A god that never spoke to our people because he doesn't care. You have a lot to learn, and I'm done with this conversation. I'm going to leave her in the room. As you leave the room, you feel a chill along your spine, and it seems that Arya has fallen even further. How powerful is the Cox Network? So powerful that one day, the internet will let your doctor perform miracles from thousands of miles away. Connecting to remote operating room. Giving a whole new meaning to the term house call. Operation complete. The Cox Network, with gig speeds everywhere. It's internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, bringing us closer. In Cox serviceable areas, speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms apply. Other restrictions may apply. We're going to join the four of you. Max and Ruben are in the uh, ship hold area, and they're kind of explaining to Grom and Zag how the ship works. There's like an upward gravitational pull uh, and a downward yeah. gravitational pull. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and we use the motion of the wings to propel the ship upward. And you can see underneath the dash that it has been like shoddily hot wired in order to be running. It seems that this ship is not functioning at full capacity. The dash is sparking because of how bad this hot wire job is. That doesn't look normal. Oh, uh, no, it's it's not actually normal. And uh, the Council of Elders always said, don't take the Titan out. People are going to try and steal our Titan. But look, like we're getting you to where you're needing to go in and such a good time. You are the people who stole the Titan. So oh, there's exactly. not going to be more of them out there. Right, exactly. The Titan is is what protects the ASMR people. If we didn't have the Titan, then that'd be bad. If the Titan's not at Ethos Summit, isn't it not protecting anybody right now? As you say that, Zag, <laughs> you feel the side of the ship. <laughs> is that, that? Oh, is no. that normal? Oh my gosh! <laughs> and you guys are able to see out of the window, flying next to your ship is a dragonfly looking ship that is very similar. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, the Council of Elders was right. Oh, uh, get Selene. We need help right now. What just happened? Um, so you know those, like, the lycanthrope people? But, uh, I, I, I guess. The, the Council of Elders always said, don't take the don't take the Titan now, because uh, the lycanthropes are going to try and steal the Titan from us and try and kill the ASMR people. But we thought it'd be okay, because, like, nobody... They told you not to, and you thought it'd be okay. But, uh, well, the, how is that working Selene. out for you? Well, 
the Council of Elders is dead. We figured it'd be okay. Like, we just wanted to come see our sister really quick and, and get her to fix our other sister. You couldn't have gotten a horse. But <laughs> can, can Zach cast Thaumaturgy on yeah. Grom's voice? Sure. Let's do it. But <laughs> I know. I know. I can feel it, too. I understand. What's going on? Your brothers are reckless. <laughs> supposed to do to help with this. Okay, okay, um, um, and Max is flipping through an instruction manual at the front of the, <laughs> at the front of the ship, and he's reading it to Ruben out loud, and he says, okay, okay, so Ruben, Ruben, uh, tell the other guys there are four things. There are three turrets and one cannon. Now, uh, how good are you guys with, like, uh, uh shooting? Um, good I enough, never... Good enough. This is all we've got. Okay, so let's go. Okay. I've never seen a ship before. Is, is there a hatch to the outside? No. There are turret controls that we can man from the inside. All right. Okay, so what do we need to do? Uh, okay, so three of you, I need you to be on turrets, and one of you, I need you to man the cannon. The cannon is kind of like the last ditch effort. It will deal a lot of damage to this other ship. However, at the power that we are currently functioning at, it may take our ship down. Ooh. So let's keep that as a last resort. Uh, okay. Who's who's going on turrets? I should have never gotten on this God's forsaken ship. Lathander, guide us. <laughs> Lathander, guide us. Okay. Uh, yeah, you should have said that before. But okay. <laughs> I thought Lathander didn't talk to anybody. That is a really touchy subject to be bringing up right now. <laughs> Get on a turret. Oh, no, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll hop on a turret. I guess I will as well. Here I go. Okay, Zach, that means you are on cannon duty. <laughs> um, is the ping pong table near the cannon? The ping pong table is right next to the cannon, okay, surprisingly. I'll be just hanging out. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. We're going to have a collective initiative. A natural 20. Unnatural 20. All right. Well, with that, we're going to call it the SS Finch. The SS Finch is up first. What I'm going to need you guys to do, uh, you will take attacks as normal. You will have a plus six to hit, which by the looks of it, most attacks will hit this ship. It seems that the crew has foregone a lot of the safety measures in order to up the speed of this dragonfly wasp looking ship in order to be able to catch you. Last minute, they saw that the ship was up in the air and they just went for it. So you will have an advantage on them for that reason and you'll have an advantage by going first. I'm going to need everyone who is rolling ballistas to roll an attack to hit, plus six. 25. 25. <laughs> 25 will definitely hit. 14. 14 will hit. 16. A 16 will also hit. Go ahead and roll me 3d10 damage. 18. 17. Okay. We're both 17. So an Pretty 18, good. a 17, we'll and a everybody. 17. 52 points of damage to this ship. Zag, are you firing the cannon? I think I'm just going to keep playing ping pong. Okay, sounds great. Alone. By yourself. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Running so, quickly from one side. I'm, I'm hoping... <laughs> Maybe Avery is down there with me to keep me company. <laughs> with that, it's going to be this Dragonfly Wasp ship's turn. They are going to take a big stride towards you guys. It seems that they are moving a lot faster than you are, and they are going straight towards at a trajectory that it looks like they're trying to intercept you. And they're going to roll to hit. They rolled terribly, so only one of them is going to hit with their ballista turrets. The ship will take... 24 damage and Grom, the turret that you are sitting at, starts smoking. It looks like it has sustained some damage. Smoking, I'm going to say for a turret, is the equivalent of bloodied for a turret. So if this were to take twice as much as this damage, it would no longer function. And with that, uh, they are going to actually take a cannon attack and be risky, which will hit at a 22. So they roll 16 D10, which will be 104 <laughs> points of damage. <laughs> uh, oh, no. So two of the turrets go offline. I guess I should have rolled that cannon. <laughs> One turret left. However, they take 52 points of damage to their own ship. They have 104 points of damage on their ship. You have 128 points of damage on your ship. Both are looking bad. They look like they're within one round of boarding your guys' ship. And with that, we're going back to the SS Finch. So Grom and Selene's turrets have been taken out. Ephemia, you are the last turret remaining. Love that for me. <laughs> 22. A 22 will hit. A 5, a 10, and a 7. So 22 points of damage. That's awesome. Okay. So the ship looks like it's taken about as much damage as your ship has taken. Zag, are you firing the cannon? I'm going to say after that last cannon shot to the SS Finch, he's probably going to realize like, oh, 
It's going down. Run up to the cannon. Look out. Does he see the ship or like? The <laughs> ship is right next to you, and next turn it will be boarding your ship. And Zag is aware of this. Okay. Zag is very aware. Okay, Zag is going to fire. Okay. Fire the cannon. Roll me a d20 to hit. 22. A 22 will definitely hit. Roll me 16 d10. 115. 115. So you guys have dealt a total of 241 hit points to this ship. It is firing on its last cylinder. 250 hit points is what this ship has. But with okay. that, it is going to be the Dragonfly Wasp ship's turn. And three... Aarakocra that are inflicted with lycanthropy of the were dragon, so they kind of look like half bird, half dragon people. They punch a hole through the ping pong table. <gasps> they start rushing inside, and Zag, you see these three bird dragon men come in, and they say, "Get them!" Was it just me? It's just you in there right now. So let's roll initiative. Initiative proper. Okay. Fifteen. Thirteen. Four. Wait, oh, five. <laughs> 14. With a 15, Grom, you are up first. So you oh. hear this huge explosion on deck in the direction of the ping pong table room. Am I able to reach it? Uh, yes. So you are able to burst through the door. You see these three large lichens enter into the room with Zag. Okay, I will um, have a hammer of Morden in my left hand and my mom's war hammer in my right um, and I am just going to wind up and chuck my hammer of Morden at whatever's closest to Zag to try to get, the, get its attention. Okay. 18 to hit. And 18 just hits. Okay. So eight points of force damage. Okay. And then um, I want to engage whichever one is closest to me. And I'll take a swing at just the other one with my regular Warhammer. Awesome. Um, whatever one's in front of me. Um, I think that misses. 10? A 10 will not hit. Yeah. And with that, that is going to be the Lycan's turn. So you are engaging one of them, Grom, and the other two are near Zag. They are going to run. Like, they they are not interested in you guys. And so both get to take attacks of opportunity. Zag's going to pull out his mace, I guess. 13. 20 to hit with 9 points of damage. A 20 will hit and 9 points of damage. Okay. And I will say it's to the person that you've already hit, Grom. Um, and Zag, a 13 will not hit. <laughs> so he just takes his mace and swings blindly in the air. And yeah. Yeah. And Good these, job, Grom! <laughs> these three lichens run out of the room, um, and they look like they know exactly where they're going. This this seems like a very big blunder on Max and Ruben's part. Whatever is on this ship that they are after, they seem to know where it is. So they are going to take the dash action to... Uh, go that direction. They are 60 feet away from Zag and Grom. They are about 30 feet away from Ephemia and Celine. And with that, Celine, you are up. I am going to use steady aim to get advantage on using my crossbow for the enemy that's just closest to me. Okay. Um, which I think is about still 30 feet away. Are they heading towards Celine or? They're heading away from Celine. So okay. they go into the main room where the uh where Ruben and Max were and they make a hard right and they are they're running down this large hallway of the ship. Okay. 24 to hit. A 24 will hit. That's 14 damage. With 14 damage. Nice. Celine, go ahead and tell me how you are going to cook this goose. Oh. Well, as he's running away from me, I'm just going to like aim for a headshot. Okay. I'm going to line that up perfectly. Just shoot him right through the skull. You shoot him right through the skull, and he falls to the ground dead. The other two seem extremely unfazed by this, and they keep running. Unfazed by the fact that they're like that their companion died. died. Yes. These guys are weird. So I'm also going to use whales from the grave. So I'm going to attack a second creature, um, whatever one's just like right close next to it. Okay. Um, and it's going to be uh, four points of necrotic damage for whales from the grave. He holds his wings to his ears, but continues again running and is determined. And is that the end of your turn, Celine? Yes. How powerful is the Cox Network? So powerful that one day, the internet will let your doctor perform miracles from thousands of miles away. Connecting to remote operating room. Giving a whole new meaning to the term house call. Operation complete. The Cox Network. With gig speeds everywhere, it's internet built for tomorrow, today. 
Cox, bringing us closer. In Cox serviceable areas, speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms apply. Other restrictions may apply. Zag, you are up. You are 60 feet away from these lichens currently. Does Zag know where are they going? Like where he's been in the ship? Like does he have any idea? Like are they going they to are, the engine room? Or they, are they are going heading to-, to a part of the ship that you did not go through with Max. Okay. Um, Zag's going to take his 30 feet of movement to get closer and then going to cast hold person on we'll say the one that Celine did a little bit of damage to. Wonderful. So tendrils out of his hands almost try and grab onto them and stop him dead in his tracks. A 16? Ah, I'm 15. Oh dang. So he passes. Anything else you'd like to do with your turn? I'll pull out the karaoke decks. Okay. And try and get a read on what these guys are. Is this the real life? <laughs> Is this just fantasy? <laughs> Hello, Zag. Dragon chosen lichen. These lycanthropes are corrupted Aracocra. They worship the god Malor, and they are in direct opposition to the Azamar and Tortle people. These are the people, Zag, as Karaoke Deck says this, These are you recognize that these are the people who are hunting the turtle people off to extinction. Gotcha. Do they have any weaknesses or anything? Does it reveal to me? Armor class, 17. Hit points, unknown. If everybody hears that, Zag's going to end his turn there. Ephemia, you are up. So there are two lichen dragon birds who are running towards a back room in the ship. Okay, so uh, with my Pact of the Tarot that Ephemia got this last round, I have split a tarot deck into the minor arcana cards and the major arcana cards. And this homebrew will actually be listed on the Patreon this week, so you can see a little bit more about what I'm talking about. Uh, But with Ephemia's new pact, I have to draw a card from the third to sixth level um, major arcana cards to do my spells. Woot! So exciting! I'm scared! And to determine uh, which one you're going to start with, because I don't really want to think back to like the the 12 that you had forever ago, Uh roll me a d4 to see which, uh, which suit you're going to be playing on. Okay, I am da, 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 four. So you will be rolling from the wands portion of your table. Pulls a card. It is the strength card, which is blight spell. Blight. Okay. Ooh, that is a heavy spell. That's too. a that's a good one. I look I looked at including. I've never that in done my... this before. <laughs> Necromatic energy washes over a creature of your choice that you can see within range, draining moisture and vitality from it. Ew. Uh, the target must make a constitution saving throw, and the target take, takes 8d8 necrotic damage on a failed save, or half as much damage on a successful one. The spell has no effect on undead or constructs. If you target a plant creature or a magical plant, it makes a saving throw with disadvantage. Would you like to go after the creature that has been damaged, or the creature has not been damaged? 8d8? I, yeah. hit, I hit the healthy one. The healthy one. Okay. So they have a plus 2 constitution. They get a 10. So with a 10, they're going to take the full 8d8. 4, 4, 5, 7, 3. 33. So you draw this card, the strength (laughs) card, and necromatic tendrils, similar to the black tendrils that happen with Zag's magic, are going to lash out at this creature you draw it on. And it is going to take 33 points of necrotic damage, you said? Yeah. Okay, with that, (laughs) go ahead and tell me how you are going to fry this dragon. So does it just like wither and die? Yeah, yeah, (laughs) like basically turns to ash if you'd like it to. All right, so Ephemia is new to this spell. She just, she's just figuring all this out as he's taking a step wither into an older lichen and then just like into dust. There we go. Awesome. That's awesome. Beautiful. That is going to be back up to the top of the order. Grom, you are 60 feet away from the final lichen. Okay. I I mean, I can move 25 feet towards him. Um, <laughs> okay. And then... Uh, you make it out into the main deck area, and you're able to... You have line of sight on him. Okay. So, yeah, I will just... 12 to hit. A 12 will not hit, unfortunately. Oh, wait, actually, no. Sorry, I rolled a 2, not a 9 with that one. So, uh, 9 to hit. A 9 will extra not hit. Use my bonus action to pull my hammer back um question if i were to aim for its 
knee or something, could I potentially knock it prone instead of trying to deal damage? Sure. Would yeah. you allow that? Or because yeah, no. it's typically knocking something prone is typically a melee right. thing. So I just wanted to. No, that's totally okay. Okay. So I'll, I'm going to be aiming to do that instead of damage. It Wonderful. Natural one. <laughs> a natural one. So, Unfortunately, your hammer misses completely, and you're not able to reel it back in this time. But on your next turn, you will be able to. Uh, with that, it is the Lycan's turn. He is going to use the rest of his movement to get into a room, shut the door behind him, and you hear a <laughs> as the lock locks behind him. Through this small window in this door, you see sparks are flying. And uh, Zag, roll me a d4 minus one. Every time you make me do one of these, I screw everyone somehow. <laughs> two. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so with a two, uh, you see sparks are flying, but nothing is happening as of right now. That is going to be the end of the Lycan's turn. Celine, you are up. The Lycan is now in a locked room. Is it the room with Arya? It is not the room with Arya. Okay, a place I haven't been either. Place you have not been. Is there a lock on the door that I could possibly there attempt? There is to pick? a lock. Okay, well I will take up my thieves' tools and I will immediately do my best to um, unpick this lock. Okay, wonderful. Roll it. Natural twenty. Oh, nice. Natural yes. twenty. You are able to pick this door open. You see this lichen. There is a massive freezer cell, and on the inside you see. Frozen in place is this Titan, this angelic protector that it seems that the ship is not the Titan, but there is something inside of this ship. The ship is protecting. Okay. Zag, you are up. What is he doing in there? He is using like welder tools to cut a hole through the bottom of the ship. Zag's going to move 30 feet towards him, still out of range to do any real damage. He's going to um, ready Guidance for if Ephemia becomes within touch range of him to cast Guidance on her during her turn. All right. With that, Ephemia, you are up. I'm going to draw a card. I'm passing Zag, moving 30 feet up, pulling a card, and I got the Hierophant which is Melf's Minute Meteors. You create six tiny meteors in your space. They float in the air and orbit you for the spell's duration. When you cast the spell and as a bonus action on each of your turns thereafter, you're going to spend one or two of the meteors, sending them streaking towards a point or points you choose within 120 feet. Once a meteor reaches its destination or impacts against a solid surface, the meteor explodes. Each creature within five feet of the point where the meteor explodes must make a dexterity saving throw. A creature takes two D6 fire damage damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one all right are you sending one or two towards this guy i'm gonna send two with a natural one they are going to fail however the titan frozen and ice will also automatically fail oh just see what happens i mean it's just fire on ice like what's the worst that could happen also it's already done (laughs) (laughs) yeah all right (laughs) Uh oh. 15. With a 15, you bloody this creature. However, as this meteor explodes, the bottom of the ship falls out and the Titan starts spiraling towards the Earth. And it seems that without the Titan's power on this ship, the ship powers down and starts plummeting towards the Earth. And I believe that's where we're going to end our session for the night. My name is Cade, the host and dungeon master of this Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition adventure. And I'm joined here by the players to my left. Alec playing Zag. Mason playing Grom. Marissa playing Ephemia. And Brooklyn playing Celine. If you love this content, go on over to patreon.com forward slash knocked. We have a wonderful group of patrons. First on the list, we have Tiefling Swords Bard, a tiefling who took a heap of Rune Rail workers in off the streets to stay at their place until the strike works out. Agrad the Unknown, the previous, previous owner of Ephemia's tarot cards, who now just plays Uno with a deck of many things. Arison Pistachioke, Professor Pistachioke's adopted kobold brother, who is excited the party is bringing the SS Finch to Greyhaven so he can take the metallic bird for a spin. Hopefully Greyhaven has a good mechanic. Dean the Destroyer and Jace Face the Destroyer, twin half-dragons who pump iron together instead of making each other gods. Janland, 
Man, a half-elf who is patiently waiting at Greyhaven Central Station for Zag's Rune Rail train to come in. Dakota Storm, the Azamar in charge of guarding the SS Finch and the Titan inside. Riss, just Riss. Actually, the first person to discover the cure for Drider poisoning, but forgot to tell anybody. And last but not least, we have Kelric Bigfur, who wants to remind you to check out this week's episode of Talk Prone, available at patreon.com forward slash knocked. We hope that you remember when life knocks you flat on your back, all you got to do is keep rolling, and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. How powerful is the Cox Network? So powerful that one day, the internet will let your doctor perform miracles from thousands of miles away. Connecting to remote operating room. Giving a whole new meaning to the term house call. Operation complete. The Cox Network. With gig speeds everywhere, it's internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, bringing us closer. In Cox serviceable areas, speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms apply. Other restrictions may apply. At Carvana, we're in the business of driving you happy. And with the widest selection of used cars under $20,000, you're bound to find a car that'll put a smile on your face. Carvana gives you control by letting you customize your down and monthly payments. You can browse tens of thousands of cars online to find one within your budget, and you won't get surprised with any bogus fees. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to shop for a vehicle. Carvana, we'll drive you happy. Availability may vary by market.